Hi, I'm Larry Richardson, your step-by-step -step chef. Welcome back to Cooking and Camping with the Step-by-Step -step Chef. This is the series where I am camping my way across America, and I invite you to come along. I will show you how to camp. There are camping videos on my website, stepbystepchef.com, but I'm also showing you how to cook some easy meals, easy camping meals that you can also make at home. They're as delicious in the woods as they are in your own kitchen. Now, in today's edition, we are going to make a great outdoors scramble. It will have mushrooms, cheese, onions, you name it, it's gonna be in this egg scramble. It makes a great breakfast. Now, just so you're not fooled by this, I don't cook like this every single morning. Some mornings I do just have a yogurt and uh, a banana, something like that, before I head out. But I do like to have fancy breakfast every now and then. They, they tend to be quite delicious and quite fulfilling, and they keep me from getting bored on the road. Now, you might notice that I also have a new campsite. If you've been following the series, Mom, if you've been following the series, you saw that I was at a different campsite last night. Now, one of the reasons that I did move was um, basically a bunch of Boy Scouts moved in to sites around me, and they were having noisy, sword fights with um, sticks. And some of them were pretty fancy. They had handles on them and the whole thing going. Well, one of the kids swung around, hit himself in the doubloons with his own sword, and uh, <laughs> it got even crazier. So I decided to get a new location. And you're always, always free to do that if you don't like the scene at your campsite. So let me show you what you need. Let me show you what you need to make the great outdoors scramble. You're absolutely gonna love this. So come on, let's cook. And for our great outdoors egg scramble, I'm going to use two eggs, um, a tablespoon or two of butter. I have four mushrooms, and that'll come out to about a quarter cup chopped, especially when they cook down. I'll use a quarter cup of red onion. I'll use about two thirds of this ham steak. Uh, a quarter cup of cheese, salt and pepper to taste. I also have a sandwich round over there, a whole grain sandwich round that I'll turn into toast. So that's pretty much it. That is going to be our great American egg scrambler. So let me show you how to put all this together. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is slice up our veggies. And these have already been rinsed off. These mushrooms have been rinsed off. I'm going to slice them like this and just slice them into small pieces. You don't have to go too small because the um, mushrooms are going to cook down as we prepare the scrambler. Mmm, this is a really um, woodsy scrambler. It's perfect for out here. The mushrooms give it a really earthy flavor. I'm sure that this will be a big hit at your campsite. And as I have said in previous episodes, please, whenever possible, make sure to frequent the local country stores. Um, you can get very fresh produce and meats there. And um, sometimes they'll have like some really delicious uh, sauces and and uh, salad dressings and uh, jams and jellies and all that kind of stuff. It can be really delicious, always worthwhile, and you're supporting the locals in the rural areas. It means a lot to them, and it really pays off for you. And for the quarter cup of red onion, I'm just scoring the top of the onion this way. And go a little close in the lines. Keep the lines a little close together. You don't want huge chunks of onion uh, in our great outdoors scrambler. Um, I mean, maybe you do, but I don't. So just cut them a little bit close. And now I'm just going perpendicular, getting the, um, the cubes shapes just right. And then I'm cutting down the face until I have a quarter cup. This is a potent onion. If you don't like red onion, you can also use um, sweet onion, yellow onion, white onion, you name it. It's all up to you. This is all about you. So we have that done. And then we'll just chop up our ham steak. Just make it into little cubes. We're gonna saute this. 
So you don't want huge slices of ham. You can save that for, for lunchtime. So I'm going to set this aside and I'll probably eat it when you're not looking. <laughs> Just before I start cooking. This is really in the morning. When I'm showing you this, I am actually making my meal. And um, that ham is looking pretty good about now. I already had a banana, so I've been responsible. Mmm, wow, is this going to be good. Okay, so that is all set. And the secret to cooking, whether you're out in the woods or, or at home, the secret is to prepare all the ingredients ahead of time so you don't have to run around last minute going, oh my gosh, I have to add this and all oh, the ingredients it calls for that. Uh, you really you can relax more if you do the prep work up front. It's just much more relaxing. You can enjoy the ride. And I find this is one of the joys of cooking, is just having everything ready. Okay, I want to get a little splash of water. Let me get some water. Don't add too much. This is like a half a teaspoon of water. It just helps the eggs to fluff up a little bit. Some people add milk. Honestly, you're adding so little that you don't taste it anyways. So I don't care what you add as long as it's, well, I wouldn't add a Coke. Like Coca-Cola is probably not gonna help you. Um, but just a little dash of water should do. Helps the eggs to fluff up. This is just a little pre-scramble. We're certainly gonna do some more scrambling in the hot pan. And, um, you know, you could add a third egg if you wanted. Uh, this is for one person. I am traveling alone. Um, but if I were with somebody else, I'd probably add a third or a fourth egg. Um, so you can adjust the ingredients up and down, you know, according to your taste. So there we go. Now I'm going to meet you over at the stove. Okay, so all of our ingredients are ready to rock and roll. Now, if you've never used a propane stove before, propane camp stove, make sure to read the instructions. Just take a look through them, because when you're dealing with gas, it can be a little bit dangerous if you do the wrong thing. Mainly, what you want to make sure is if you're trying to light this, whether you're using a match or a fire starter, and it won't light, but the gas starts to build up, stop trying to light it, let the uh, wind you know, dissipate the gas, and then try to light it. Because if you try to light it and there's a lot of gas built up, you could have a flashback. So just be real careful about that. So now I'm gonna turn the gas on. I can hear that telltale hiss. There we go. I'm just taking my fire starter, and that's lit. And uh, there's a blue flame there. Uh, you don't have to test it with your hand because it's there. This kind of propane can be a little bit invisible, a little bit tricky. Now I'm turning it down some. There we go. That's a good cruising level. And that's about quarter heat for the propane stove. It's not an exact science, so you really have to know your stove. And I'm just going to put our fry pan on there. Give that a really quick preheat, because this stuff really rocks and rolls. And the first thing we're going to do is saute our ham and vegetable mixture. Oops, this pan is moving around. These um, cables are very uneven. <laughs> so is my stove at home, so that's just the way life works. And here's our mix. Ham, onion, mushrooms. Yum! Let's just scoop that in there. And hear it sizzling. What we're doing is giving this a good saute for our great outdoors scrambler. And what we want to do is get these mushrooms to cook down some. Get, they're going to get smaller and they're going to look a little bit translucent. The eggs are going to get very translucent. And at that point, and this about take five to ten minutes, at that point we're going to stir in our egg mixture. I'm going to turn that heat up just a little bit. Okay, you can hear it sizzling. And this is a scrambler made for the outdoors, but you can eat it at home too. It's just as delicious indoors. You can um, make a tent camp 
or a tent out of a blanket in your dining room. Maybe put a roaring fire on your HDTV or computer screen. Get your favorite outdoor concert chair and sit back and have yourself a delightful breakfast. As for me, I'm eating it outdoors and I'm actually racing rain today. It poured last night and it looks like it might want to open up today. Now, if it opens up while I'm cooking this, why don't we end up with a very wet scramble and an epic story to tell. That's the fun of camping, the unpredictable. And I also have like um, yogurt and a little bit of granola back in the car, so I won't starve. You always find, you always have to have a plan B when you're outdoors, cooking, hiking, camping. You gotta be really aware of what you're doing and always have a plan B. So if things go south, um, you're not gonna starve, you're not gonna get soaked, you're not gonna whatever. That is the fun of it. This is how the settlers did it. And there is just a lot to be said for making something like this with mushrooms and onions and ham and also having the um, rich aroma of the pine trees, the pine sap, uh, the leaves and pine needles that have gathered on the ground, the dirt, the rocks. I could go on all day. I'm sure you don't want me to. But it does kind of add a seasoning of its own to this kind of dish when you're cooking in the great outdoors. I highly, highly recommend it. And I hope you will take a look at my cooking and camping with a step-by-step -step chef videos because in the separate camping videos, I'm going to show you the basic essentials of camping comfortably and being prepared in case you need that plan B. Um, I'm really enjoying driving across the country making these videos. And, um, you know, if you want to give this a whirl, I'm going to tell you how to do it. And then you can make it your own, just like my recipes. I'm going to give you the, the basics, and then you do what you want to with it. That's the same with this dish. I am not a cook tater. I can't tell you how to cook. I can show you how to cook, but it's up to you to decide what you want to do with it. Mm. I'm not a camp tater either. I might look like a tater, but I'm not a camp tater either. I like to give you the basics and then make it your own. I mean, I've, I've camped in so many different ways. I've done everything from glamping to backwoods camping where you've got to bring a shovel and tote out everything. And I mean everything. I'm going to talk about that in the camping series. So I hope, again, that you'll take a look. So this is cooking down quite nicely. Again, it took about five to ten minutes. The um, onions are starting to turn translucent. You can see the mushrooms are cooking down. And we want to stop the sauteing process at the point where it looks like the mushrooms might disappear. And we're just about there. Because you want them to have a presence. They worked hard to be here. So I'm going to go get the egg mixture and we're going to stir that in. Give that a quick stir. And there we go. And then we just do this. Just give it a little bit more of a scramble, get all the ingredients, the mushrooms, the ham, the onion, all mixed into the eggs. Kind of keep it moving. Um, depending on the types of pan you have, you don't want everything to stick to the pan. Um, and you certainly don't want it to burn. What we're trying to do is get the egg to the point where it's dry. You don't want, you don't want to eat it now. That's egg soup, ham and egg soup. Actually, that sounds like, like it might be a good, uh, Hmm, I'm going to have to take a note. That would be a delicious, delicious step-by-step -step chef recipe. Maybe. Okay, maybe not. But anyways, let's keep this moving. The eggs are going to uh, scramble up pretty quickly. And then you're going to have yourself a delicious meal after we make our toast the way the settlers made it. Keeping the egg moving also uh, keeps it from sticking to the pan, which is, makes it easier to clean up. Because you're not only the keeper of the chuck wagon and the chef, or cookie, that's what we would call you, cookie, on the chuck wagon, but you're also the KP person. 
one who has to clean up the kitchen when you're done. And because you're in the great outdoors, it's actually fun. You might even be able to get your kids to do it if you make it sound fun, a la Tom Sawyer. And getting everyone to paint the fence. Well, make dishes sound fun. Boy, isn't this fun. Mm. Yeah, well, when you're camping, you gotta do it all. And that, that is part of the fun. Okay, there's a nice scramble forming. I see it drying out. Now you can add a third egg if you want. Um, if you don't like ham, you can take the ham out of it. I mean, just think, think outside the pan. Think about how would you make this delicious? I mean, you might add something that I'm not even thinking about. And as long as it's not something that's scurrying in the woods, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Okay, that is done. We're going to get that off the heat. And I left the heater going because we're going to make our toast. The settlers, they didn't have toasters. The, um, they didn't have electric cords back then that would reach from New York to San Francisco. So they had to toast on the road using open flames and whatever bread they had. So just putting this face down. And really keep an eye on it when you're doing this because uh, it does tend to burn. It's not going to set off a fire detector. I guess that's a, that's a plus. You don't have to fan it and worry about that. Um, but you also don't want burnt bread. Oops, that one's sticking. <laughs> okay. And just keep flipping it a little bit. Uh, get it to cook down. Uh, get a nice little brown to it. Without the brown, it's not toast. It's just a piece of hot bread. So we're going to toast this. So congratulations, look at what you just did. You just made this delicious, great outdoors scrambler with settler toast. Toast the way the settlers had it. I'm impressed. Whether you made this out in the woods or you made it at home, it is absolutely delicious. Now, if you like this recipe, please visit my website, stepbystepchef.com. I already have over 175 recipes there along with step-by-step -step videos that will show you how to make them. Now I'm adding on top of that this series, Cooking and Camping with the Step-by-Step -step Chef, where I'm going to show you more easy recipes and how to camp the easy way and the comfortable way. And I just think you're going to enjoy the series. I'm having a blast making it. I hope you'll also check out my cookbook, Cooking with the Step-by-Step -step Chef, Check out the website. A link to it is right there. You can get it in Kingle, uh, Kingle. I'm hungry. Kindle or print version. It's totally up to you. So again, my name's Larry Richardson. I am your step-by-step -step chef. And I'll see you in the next episode.